so a couple of things to keep in mind here. One is that um, that number includes what's allegedly about $1.7 million of legal fees on the Carlisle Mountain Water side. Um, we, we don't know what those fees are. That's the first time we've ever seen those fees. Um, I have no idea whether they're accurate or not. Um, but the fact is that um, uh, we are not... Um, we are not automatically required to pay those fees. There are a number of things that have to happen as a function of state law, statute, for those fees to be paid. Um, and so we're not, we don't believe at this point we're in any position to suggest that um, we're on the hook for all of that, nor do I think Mont Water is. It's way too early. So in your view then, what would be a much more accurate depiction of, of where we are right now as far as the costs you know of that have been incurred in trying to acquire the Mountain Water Company? So I can, I can tell you that as of today, we have invested, and I'm sorry, I'm going to look at a spreadsheet so I make sure that I'm not telling you a wrong number, Peter. Um, as of today, we have spent uh, uh, $1.3 million. Um, that includes, um, that's not just attorney's fees, that's engineering, that's expert witnesses, folks who are telling us that this is the right thing to do for a wide variety of reasons. Um, so that's our investment. We're about $1.3 million, and is that about what uh, where you figured you would be about this time, or is that still pretty high as to what you originally had thought? You know, it's, it's higher than it's higher than what we thought, but um, we also have had a number of um, we had a number of unexpected uh, participants in this lawsuit. Uh, the employees joined the lawsuit. Uh, Liberty joined the lawsuit, and we've had some interesting um, motions on the part of Carlisle um, that have um, caused us to have to invest more in lawyering. Now, where, where are we? Uh, I had heard also that there may be some, uh, some have, have uh, tried to move the date of the court hearing, which uh, right now is scheduled, I believe, for March 15th, uh, to keep moving that back and back. Is, is, that, is that accurate, or has that happened yet? Or, and if it does, uh, what are you trying to do to keep that from happening? There was a, there was a motion to, um, to uh, postpone the proceedings. Um, Judge uh, Townsend uh, last week or the week before, um, in an order, uh, denied that motion. So we're going to proceed with trial in March. Okay. So now, well, what exactly will happen during that hearing? Well, I, uh, because I'm not a lawyer, I will give, I will give you the mayor's version. Um, All right. We'll, we will demonstrate uh, to the court that it, it's more necessary for the city of Missoula to own this monopoly utility than it is for uh, the current owner or any successor in interest to own it. Um, and after that, we would enter a valuation stage during which uh, a panel, a commission of three, uh, one appointed by the city, one appointed, well, actually one recommended by the city, one recommended by Carlisle, um, and another agreed upon by the two other commissioners and all approved by the judge uh, would begin a process of placing a value on the utility. All right. Now, one part of the story that I really wanted to get some clarification, uh, it says, and I quote, uh, Mayor John Engen says he recognizes that the legal fees are large, but he says the long-term cost to the communities of not owning the utility would be, quote, hundreds of times higher, end quote. And, of course, when you add that to the $3.5 million uh, at, the, at the top of the story, that, that again, uh, makes one wonder, my goodness, that, that's a great deal more than folks had anticipated. Could you clarify that statement for us? Sure. So, so based, on, based on our analysis, um, what we think any uh, next buyer that's not the city will need to do, uh, based on what we've learned to date in the discovery process, is that there are millions and millions of dollars that leave um, the city of Missoula, and that's not to say the city of Missoula's coffers, but the, the pockets of ratepayers in Missoula, 
um, that go to uh, expenses that the city of Missoula wouldn't have, uh, and you multiply that over the course of uh, many years of ownership, and it's easy to see hundreds of millions of dollars uh, leaving the community that could be used here to pay wages, to um, to pay contractors to help us um, bring the system up to industry standards um, that could be reinvested in the system or that could be used to keep rates down. All right. So, so basically those costs would go into perpetuity. Correct. Okay. All right. Now, um, uh, another question. That, my calculation, Peter, was over about 20 years. Oh, okay. Well, 20 years is not exactly perpetuity, but it's close. <laughs> no. All right. Now, we had also heard some concerns from uh, some of our listeners uh, regarding the, the mountain water uh, 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 condemnation and the uh, uh, takeover by the city. Uh, and the question was, and let me just try to quote it as best I could, uh, would the city being owned, uh, pardon me, the mountain water being owned by the city, uh, could it possibly be used uh, to force annexation for folks who uh, would find themselves in a position where they had to hook up the mountain water who may be in the county? I'm sorry, Peter. I, I lost about the middle of that question. Well, that's, that's okay. Uh, the, the question was, uh, could the fact that the city would own mountain water and someone in the county uh, uh, be wanting to hook up, could that be used as a tool to force annexation of that particular property? Uh, I suspect it, it could be used as a tool to require annexation. We wouldn't use it as a tool. Um, we're not going to force anybody to annex without uh, a bunch of other reasons. Um, frankly, it doesn't pay to annex a single household using a, uh, the services of a water utility any more than it pays to annex a single household um, using a sewer utility. All right. So anything else... Sense. Anything else that you'd like the public to know regarding uh, uh, your your feelings? I know, of course, you've stated many, many times the reason why uh, you're pursuing this so diligently from from your end, and, and also the county or pardon me, the city council uh, working hard to try to make this happen uh, for the overall good for Missoula. Could you kind of restate that for us so folks maybe can get a proper perspective of where Mayor, Mayor John Engen is standing right today? Absolutely. There will be a new owner of Mountain Water Company. It will not be, unless it's the city of Missoula, um, it will not be a local owner. It will be a corporation um, that's investor-held, um, whose only real goal will be to make money. Um, and this utility and the others that are at play here um, will be considered ways to make money and leverage other purchases. Um, decisions will be made at a distance, um, and ultimately the folks who are paying the rates today will suffer. The city of Missoula will provide long-term ownership and stewardship, and we will reinvest in the system. Now, uh, the, the only other thing that I, that I uh, recall people being pretty a little bit nervous about is the fact that if the city does own mountain water, uh, removes it from the uh, consideration and uh, regulation from the Public Service Commission. So uh, is there anything you can say about that to try to put people's fears to rest? Sure. So every other, uh, every other water utility in every major city um, in Montana is not regulated by uh, uh, the Public Service Commission, and almost to a city, um, those water rates are lower than uh, than mountain waters rates, and those systems are uh, likely to be in better condition than mountain water is. Uh, regulation by the Montana Public Service Commission uh, does not guarantee low rates, nor, nor does it guarantee system maintenance.